dear students of class 9th today we will discuss new chapter of geography name of the chapter is drainage the term drainage is uh, used to describe the river system of an area generally in the mountainous regions several small streams flowing from different directions come together to form the main river which ultimately drains into a large water body such as a lake or a sea or an ocean now let us discuss another important geographical term that is drainage basin you might have studied in junior classes also about uh, a river basin an area drained by the main river and its tributaries is known as a river basin or if you want you can call it a drainage basin so instead of saying an area drained by the main river and its tributaries is known as a drainage basin simply what we can say an area drained by a single river system is called a drainage basin and what is a single river system so that is formed by the main river and its tributaries and with regard to the tributaries these are the small rivers which are joining the main river again let us discuss the some of the important uh, terms what is drainage just i have told you the term drainage describes the river system of an area then drainage basin the area drained by a single river system is called a drainage basin then another new important term that is water divide in very simple sentence what we can say a mountain or an upland or a hill which separates two drainage basins is termed as a water divide for example we can take the example of ambala water divide it separates indus basin and the ganga drainage basin after that we will discuss about another very important term that is river system a river along with its tributaries may be called as river system so these are the terms that uh, you will keep in mind you must learn by heart now we will discuss about the drainage systems of our country so with regard to the drainage system of our country we can broadly divide the drainage systems of our country into two main types or two major groups the himalayan river system and the peninsular river system so with regard to the himalayan river system this river system is formed by the rivers which are flowing from himalayas or which are originating from the himalayas and with regard to the peninsular rivers these are the rivers which are originating from the hills of peninsula so now let us discuss about some of the important differences what we are getting in between the himalayan river system and the peninsular river system because this question is also very important you may be getting differentiate between the himalayan river system and the peninsular river system so the important points of differences in between the himalayan river system and the peninsular river system are first one with regard to the himalayan uh, rivers what i told you just now these rivers are originating from the himalayas and the 
first point what we can include in the peninsula river these are the rivers which are originating from the hills of peninsula another point what we can uh, count here very important point with regard to the catchment area of the himalayan rivers that is very large but with regard to the peninsula rivers their catchment area is very small and what is catchment area catchment area is the area from which a river gets its drainage or you can say the source of water so that is known as catchment area of a river so the himalayan rivers are having large catchment area but with regard to the peninsula rivers they are having very small catchment area another point of difference with regard to the himalayan rivers these rivers pass through the gorges or we can say ice shaped valley but with regard to the peninsula rivers these rivers form broad and shallow valleys another point of difference with regard to the himalayan rivers these uh, rivers are engaged in high erosional activities but with regard to the peninsula rivers these rivers are having very little erosional capacity or you can say they are engaged in very small very little erosional activity another point of reference with regard to the himalayan rivers they are used for irrigation as they are perennial in nature they are having water throughout the year but with regard to the peninsula rivers these are of little use for irrigation another point of difference with regard to the himalayan rivers they are getting their source of water from glacier and also from monsoonal rainfall but with regard to the peninsula rivers they are having single source that is monsoonal rainfall so they are seasonal in nature or you can say the peninsula rivers are non perennial in nature so if you want you can count uh, names of the important rivers also in the himalayan river the important river what we are getting in this system are the indus the ganga and the brahmaputra these are the important rivers of the himalayan rivers but uh, regard to the peninsula rivers the important peninsula rivers are godavari krishna kaveri narmada and tapi so these are the important peninsula rivers after that we will discuss about drainage pattern so different rivers they are forming different types of dijans and with regard to the dijans formed by the rivers depend on the slope of the land underlying rock strata as well as the climatic condition of the area so these are the three important factors which are influencing the drainage pattern or the dijans formed by rivers first one that is dendritic pattern so dendritic pattern develops where the river channel flows the slope of the land the stream with its tributaries resembles the branches of a tree so the first one this is the drainage pattern which is showing you the dendritic design then after that another one is trellis pattern with regard to the trellis pattern this pattern is uh, found generally in those area where hard and the soft rocks exist parallel to each other and in this pattern the tributaries are joining the main river 
at approximately right angle then third one this is the rectangular pattern so with regard to the rectangular drainage pattern it develops on a strongly jointed rocky terrain and the fourth and the last pattern that is the radial pattern so this pattern develops when streams flow in different directions from a central peak or dome like structure so these are the four important drainage patterns or you can say the designs formed by different rivers of the world depending upon the slope of the land underlying rock structure as well as the climatic condition of an area after that we will discuss